Welcome, I'm filming the Xiaomi Mi 10T Lite and today I'll show you a couple tweaks and tricks you can do on this device. And starting off we're gonna begin with the refresh rate and all you need to do is go into the settings from here go down to display where you'll find the refresh rate now, as you can see for me it's already set to 120 um, but i believe for you it will be at 60 and you can change it to a high refresh rate and what it will do is as you can see it gives you a uh, description of better quality um, but i think the, the image right here or animation is really good in terms of showing you how it will affect your uh, display and overall the image so if you look at this ball right here jumping up it looks like it's kind of skipping right while the one at 120 is moving super smooth and nicely and that's basically what high refresh rate does it shows you uh, more frames in between uh, compared to the 60 so in other words if you imagine refresh rate as a, as a really quick slideshow uh, so the 60 hertz for instance will give you a uh, 60 frames uh, of or 60 images in a single second while the 120 will give you twice as much so 120 images in a single second and that basically leaves a lot of room in between to add additional frames so if you see a image for instance one right here and one right here with 120 you will have one in the middle as well making it look much smoother so i recommend it but there is a drawback to this, it will consume a little bit more battery uh, on your device, so if battery is uh, something that you want to have or that you prioritize, uh, then you might want to keep it at 60 and lose out on the additional quality that you get from this. Now moving on to the next one, it's going to be the dark mode and it's also accessible in the display, so as you see I just went back and we have dark mode right here. And from here you can turn it on manually by just flipping on the toggle as I just did. And there we go, we're in dark mode. Uh, but you also have the ability to check it as a schedule. So it will turn on at 7 and uh, well, 7 p.m. and turn off at 7 a.m. So in this way you will basically get best of both worlds. So when it's needed it's going to turn on during night. So you won't be blasting your irises with just this white background. Uh, but once it gets light outside again uh, in the morning and throughout the day and you know the sun is out uh, you will have the light mode which is a little bit clearer to see and direct sunlight in my opinion so like i said this is basically best of both worlds and uh, schedule probably would be the best one and then moving on to the next option it's going to be the home screen layout and as you can see at the moment we have the uh, what i would call uh, iphone experience now which isn't very good in my opinion here as well so all icons are smack in the middle of your home screen and what you can do is combat that is not open a game so what you can do to combat this is basically create folders to get rid of them uh, but if you prefer to have an actual android experience you can go into the settings and from here we're gonna go into the home screen uh, then home screen right here and we have regular which i would call irregular actually because uh, drawer mode was the regular android experience all the time um, and here we have the with app drawer so that's basically what we're looking for that is what i would call a regular android experience and this is more of a apple experience here so once you check it on you can simply leave it and there we go as you can see it did take a little bit of a second to adjust uh, so one of the dots disappeared and if we go into the second page there is way less stuff here all the games that were here are completely gone and there is no third page at all and overly the uh, display is a little bit cleaner uh, less cluttery and if you're wondering where all the apps that we had have gone all you need to do now is pull up to access all of them and as you can see they are all here so this is the all section right here where well, basically you have all the apps but you also have the categories on here which is really nice that they included this and basically you can swipe up swipe from side to side to uh, oops and basically access different categories if you want games boom top games and all your games are in this category and it removes everything else so you have quick access to everything 
shopping, as you can see, news, tools, photograph, uh, entertainment. So you can see everything is categorized and you can quickly find it. And even if you can't, you can tap on the search and simply type in the name of the app that you're looking for to quickly find it. Um, and also I believe in here, uh, the very top in this section, will usually be populated with, well, the most uh, used apps. So at the moment, it's kind of all over the place. So as you can see, we have settings, cameras, gallery, phone, Teams, security, eBay, and Facebook, which is kind of a uh, weird, wacky, uh, recommended um, a list of apps that are well, primarily used. Uh, but once you start using the phone and the phone realizes what your uh, applications are that you use most often, it will start switching them up here. Um, but yeah, this is basically, in my opinion, a little bit of a better experience uh, for Android that is also a bit cleaner. And then moving on to the next one, it's gonna be the icon size. So we can shrink the icons if you want to. And again, it's in the same place where the home screen style was. So again, let's go on the home screen. And then, where was it? Icon size, right over here. And I believe default is medium, um, but as you can see, you can make it bigger or smaller depending on what you need. Now the spacing, um, how many icons are in a row and then the column doesn't change here. Uh, it only changes the size of them. If you want to change the amount of icons you have, all you would need to do is go into the home screen layout. And then here you can change it from four by six to five by six. And this will add, as you can see, additional uh, icon making them a little bit more compact. Now, personally, I'm not a fan of how this looks like. It makes it look a little bit crammed, uh, but to each their own. If you like it, then good for you. And then moving on to the next one, it's gonna be the floating windows, which can be accessed. Let's see, um, either I believe through here, but I might be wrong. Um, it looks like, let's see. Okay, so let's go to the settings. Maybe it's not enabled. And from here you want to scroll down to special features. Oh, there we go. And from here, floating windows. All right, uh, I know I couldn't open it because this is only for, for notifications. So this works uh, when you get notification from any kind of application and what it will do is as you can see right here it will bring up this banner as you normally see when you get a notification and from there you can grab it slide it down and it will open it up in this pop-up view which can be resized uh, minimized in this way and this is a good indication of how you can use it so it will allow you to have an overlay so if right now we'll get a notification uh, I will get this pop-up right here and I can slide it down and it will create this kind of small window on top of the settings that are open right now. And from here I can interact with the tiny little window, write messages and then basically tap on the side and to minimize to this small one like this and I can either disregard it and move it uh, out of the way and just completely close it or leave it there till the moment that I want to interact with it once more. But as you can see, it's already, by default, it's uh, turned on, so you don't need to actually do anything here. Then moving on to the uh, last option, it's gonna be the second space. And this will allow you to virtually set additional uh, part of your display, or not display, the device. So uh, as you can see right now, we're what I would call the first space, and well, the only one at this moment, because there is no other one but you can set a second space which will be completely independent from what is right here so if we go into something like for instance photos right now as you can see there's a bunch of photos here uh, they're all primarily the same uh, nothing really special uh, but yeah you can see that there they are um, and if we now go and create the second space which is again in special features Oops, not what I want to click. There we go, special features. We'll have second space and simply turn it on. Okay, 
give it a moment. Now when you're gonna be setting it up for the first time, I believe we do need to uh, go through a little bit of a setup here, which should be presented in a second. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, switch between spaces, uh, use a password or a shortcut. So we have two choices. I can select if you want to launch second space through a, basically a app-like shortcut on your home screen, on the main space, or if you just want to use a, for instance, a pattern, pin, password, whatever it's set to. But I'm going to go with the passcode uh, right here. So let's continue. And we have set a password. So this is a second space password. So start now. Uh, confirm first space password so because I already have one set for the main space that I have used uh, the primary one I will need to confirm it so this is the me confirming it and now it tells us to set one for the second space so I'm gonna basically mirror it and create one a little bit differently so that's one repeat it to confirm it and there we go and from here it's a fingerprint. Now you could set a fingerprint to it as well. And what this will allow you to do is instead of writing the uh, pen, pattern, password, or whatever it is, you can just use a fingerprint. Now you could have, for instance, your right thumb to be the main space and then your left thumb to be the second space. And you can quickly switch between them depending on which finger you use to unlock the device. But I'm gonna skip it um, and just show you uh, the bare kind of minimum here so right now we're on the second space which you can guess by the wallpaper which is the blue one and on this space everything is completely independent uh, the apps the settings are completely different as you can see there is basically no apps as i did have some games installed they're not on here um, they're only on the first space also if we go into the gallery and not the weather the gallery which is below um, you will see that there is no photos here. I'll quickly go back. But, so as you can see, there is literally not a single photo here, which I did show you right before we started this, that I did have a bunch of photos in the gallery. They're not here. So same thing, if you capture photos here, they will be only on this space and not on the first one. Um, so you could basically create almost like two different phones and you could use one as an example for work and solely for work and have everything work associated on that device while on your second space you could have um, your personal stuff and basically contacts and all that stuff that are associated with your personal life and just to show off uh, the locking and unlocking so uh, as you can see the home screen looks normal and if you swipe up you will have the passcode right so if i use this one which was the first space it will take me to well the first space and literally where i left off right as you can see there we go and now if i lock it again and unlock it using the second space code we're now back in the second space and it just allows you to quickly switch between them this would now conclude all the tweaks and tricks that I wanted to show. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.